welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode, we're looking at using the treat and train in our training, seeing how it works, what advantages it has, and how you can use it in different ways to as an asset to your training. So the treat and train, if you don't know, is this box here. It has treats, as you might expect, in this compartment. And there is a remote control, which when I click it, it will dispense treats for the dogs and it makes a noise you can turn off the noise so the treat and train formerly it used to be called a manners minder so if you're looking for it or you go on someone and you see someone mentioning a manners minder this is the same thing they just changed the name i'm not sure when but over the last year the name has changed you can get it off many sites including amazon so if you're looking for one they're a really great device there are other little types of training treat dispensing boxes out there um, and I have used them. I've used this, some s simpler ones which you have to refill at every time you use them. So, and they uh, tend to be short range. So they were fine when I was doing things in the house and I didn't need to go very far. But when you start to get up into a field and you're doing things like um, running contacts or a long sequence of jumps, then you need something that you can work at a distance and the manners minder will work at quite a long distance because of the way the remote is set up and as I said put equally once you filled that compartment up with treats you don't have to keep refilling it after every time you've dispensed it. So what do I use the treat and train for? I use it for lots of stuff. Uh, obviously I use it for agility because that's my primary thing so I might use it for a line of jumps, weaves, dog walk, running A-frame, tunnel work. There's so many things I've used that for. Why it's handy, rather than just having, say, a toy or a treat ball on the ground, is the dog can't self-reward. What I mean by that is, say I'm teaching weave poles, if I just put a toy out and my dog missed the last weave pole and got the toy, well, they've rewarded themselves for missing the last weave pole and I've got no control over that. Now, of course, if you've trained your dog not to take the toy unless you tell them to, brilliant, you don't need to worry. But at the same time, not all of us have got to that stage or we're not 100% reliable on that. So having the treat and train means I can control the situation a little bit better. It means that only when I say the dog can have a treat is it going to get it. So if it's setting up at the end of the weaves again, the dog comes out, oh, it didn't get the treat. We do it again. When the dog does get the weaves, then it gets the treat. It also works, of course, as a great um, marker or target for your dog, if you're doing running contacts or anything like that. I find it really useful for that and really gets the dogs to drive with their heads down because they can see it and go for it. There's other ways you can use it, um, and I'm going to show you some simpler ways to use it as well while we're at it, which will include doing things like recall games. You can also use it for self-control games. There's so many ways you can use a treat and train. Really think of it is whenever you want to have a reward out for your dog to see and to be able to easily send them to. Anytime you need something like that, you can use a treat and train. And they have got a function on them. You can use them for stays. I have never actually done that, but you can obviously use them for stays. You could use them for when you're teaching your dog to wait while another dog is being trained so you can keep rewarding them, all sorts of things. So now I've had a little chat about that. Um, I'm gonna get Pi Pi out and we're going to look at how you go about training your dog to know what this is because the dog comes and looks at this you know and I can explain it all to you I can't explain it to a dog in words they're going to look at it and go what the heck is that be aware that some dogs if they're noise sensitive may not like the noise it makes when it dispenses you can change the setting of the noise to make it either quieter you can turn it off altogether I have done that in a group setting Otherwise, I get every single dog that knows what treat and train is coming to my treat and train when I click it off because they think they've been rewarded. You can also just say turn it off. I like to have the sound, especially when I'm at a distance. Firstly, because it's an extra little reward cue for the dog. It's a bit like a clicker. So the dog hears that, they go, yes, I nailed it, and they go off. In per perfectly, just for my sake, having the noise means I can tell it's worked because every now and again for whatever reason it might not work I, you know it could be that you've had the control the wrong way and it can't 
get it or I don't know. Sometimes it just won't work. Can happen when you forget to turn it on because I have done that. And you press it and you go, well, it didn't make a noise. And the dog's standing there going, well, it's not working. And you realize that you've messed up. So for my sake, but as I say, if you've got a dog that doesn't like the sound, you may be best off just to turn it on to quiet and you can do that. So I'll get Magpie out and we shall have a look at how we go conditioning a dog to understand what a treat and train is and then how we're going to use it for a simple game. So Magpie has never seen a treat and train. So I'm just going to bring her over to it and let her look at the box. Magpie, what's this? And there's some treats there where I dispensed them. So I'm just going to let her pick up some treats and she go, ah, look, there's treats there. I've got Magpie on the lead because we're outside. I would normally do this in a confined space like a living room. Good girl. Now, because she's looking at that and paying attention, I'm going to beep it. Ooh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Magpie. Now you can see she wasn't too 100% sure about that sound. What's that? Look, 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 look. She found that sound a little bit worrying. I'm going to turn the sound down. And I'm just going to give her the treats from the dispenser so she knows they're good treats. Yeah. These are um, fish for dog treats. So they're hard treats, but not too big. Right. What's this? What's this? Oh, what's that? Oh, we're still a bit worried. What's this? What's this? What's this? Yeah, look. Yeah. So Magpie's giving you a good example of what can happen. The dog goes, mm, not sure about that. So this time I'm going to have her a little bit further off when I do it dispense it so that she can see it but it's not too close okay, I'm just gonna wait until she's looking in this way I do want her to know what's happening oh what's that what's that what's that get it get it get it oh she, I'm still not sure but if we put it there oh sure I could take it there but there so you see so you can see how you may need to do this with your dog building up a little bit of confidence yeah is it scary is it scary tweed and twain you ready? <gasps> what's that? What's that? What's that? Go, watch it, what's it? Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. Yeah, get it, get it. Good girl. So we're getting a little bit like, mm, still not sure about that noise. And that she can also hear the motors working. So she's not sure about the motors working. We're also in an environment where she's slightly less confident because we're outside in the field. So I would expect it to be a little bit more curious and um, outgoing with this if we were at home where it's quieter. Okay, should we go again? Oh, what'd it do, what'd it do? That was good, Magpie. I was pleased with that because she didn't, she just looked, she didn't um, worry. So I'm gonna just see, we'll do it again. Oh, was that good? Good girl, Magpie, what's this? Get him, good tweets. So you can see she's going to need a few sessions to build her confidence using a manners minder. And that's fine. We're going to do that. We'll build up her confidence and we'll get her there. Won't we, my maid? So you can see now the basics and how a dog could be worried about it. Of course, if you have a very food motivated dog and Magpie isn't that high, uh, hasn't got that high value for food like the others and certainly not kibble. So if I had cocktail sausage down there, she'd probably be a little bit more, because like, the cocktail sausage won't go through the slot so easily. But um, because it's kibble, she's a little bit like, mm, mm, she is more toy motivated. But I'll get you out one of the dogs that is very food motivated, and you will see the kind of excitement that can be generated by a tree and train. And I'll show you a game to play with them. So the girls are out. You can see they know what a treat and train is and they're already taking interest. If I was to press this button, look at that. She knew the noise, Swift knew the noise, they came running. I'm gonna show you an easy game you can do that I play at home. I think they asked you to sit, madam. Were you sitting? Thank you, wait there. Uh, we're gonna do a recall game. Do this at home, I quite like doing this up and down a hallway, or you can do it in the living room. And this is a great game to just get you started, getting your dog to understand the value of treat and train, but also to come back to you. So as I've got the girls out, I'm going to be a bit sneaky. No, I'm not going to be. I'll, I'll, be, I'll play fair. I was going to debate whether I had 
toys uh, treats on me as well, but I'll play fair. Okay, so I've got some good treats on me. All right, Sparrow. So I could be here, and I'm going to say, <coughs> get it, get it, get it, and set the control off, and look who else came. Good girl. And now, did you see, it's down on the floor, she came back to me. So recall. So let's do that a bit more formally. Ready? Swift, can you come out the way? Get it, get it, get it. Sparrow. Recall. Very simple recall game. Swift. You're a bit slow, aren't you? Swift, you're going to get it this time? Get it, get it, get it. Good girl. Swift. Good girl. So you can see how you can play this in the house. Ready, get it. Sparrow. Now, do you see how I cheated there a little bit? Because I wanted Swift to get it. I called her on her recall and I clicked it. <laughs> and did you see she had to make a choice? And that was quite, I have to say, I've never done that before, but she had to really make a choice of who do I go to? And she chose the recall, which is awesome. So we're using this as a distraction. We're using this to get them to go away from us, then bring them back on a recall. It's just a fun game, bouncing back and forth. Builds up a lot of value for you, builds up the value for the treat and train. Lots of fun. Obviously, if you might have a dog who's so obsessed with your treat and train that they won't come back to you. Okay, that is something that can happen. And I know sometimes someone, a little madam, can be a little bit keen, can't she? What happens then? Well, the simple thing is, if your dog goes there, they've eaten the treat and they just stand, and you've called them once, you wait. Eventually, a dog's going to look at that and go, well, there's nothing else coming out of here. It's a bit boring now. And they look at you. And you can then say, good, nice. And hopefully they'll then come to you. I wouldn't give them a reward in terms of a treat because it isn't a proper recall. But I would certainly say, yeah, good, nice, and praise them. And then I'd do it again, send them out to that, come back to you and, and see how you get on. Now, one thing you can do is have higher value treats on you than in the treat and train. This is kibble based usually. So that's quite handy, quite good to be able to do. You could have chicken, hocktail sausages, anything that's really high value. So your dog gets the idea of pinging back to you, coming back to you gives them a higher value reward. With the girls, because they are experienced, I would argue that the treats that are in there are probably just about as high value as those. Those treats are homemade cheese treats, so they probably are slightly higher value for them, but certainly with Sparrow, only slightly higher, because that she doesn't she's fed raw, so kibble for her is like, whoa, gold dust. But because they're experienced, I know they'll come back and forth. That's fine. But I say, if you have trouble with that, then definitely have a higher value reward on you to start with. So that's your fundamentals of using a treat and train in your training. And as we go along, I'm doing stuff with Magpun. She gets more used to it. We'll look at doing um, more advanced skills with the treat and train, and I'll show them to you. So you can see the different ways you do it. Honestly, there's so many ways that I use this. Yeah, it's hard to list them all because there are so many ways. Uh, I hope that makes sense and might even interest you in buying a treat and train. And if you have got a treat and train but don't know how to use it, maybe this will give you an idea of the benefits you can use, do with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you might like to subscribe to the Everyday Canines YouTube channel. And you can set up notifications to let you know when the next video is coming out. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.